Hey, hey, this is Charmaine Ironside, Love Your Way Light Transformation Coach and owner of Ironside Fitness Studios in Calgary. And in this video, I want to share with you a couple of amazing, powerful tips so that you can move through the holiday season and avoid the typical, classic kind of weight gain that a lot of people go through. Now, there's a stat that I was reading that said a, the average North American puts on about nine pounds between the 31st of October and the 1st of January. I used to be that person, probably way more than nine pounds. I used to just let everything go during Christmas and I would gain weight, I would eat so many sugary sweets and I'd feel so yucky in my body. I would get so busy with the shopping and the cooking and all these to-dos that I would stop exercising. And so all of this compounded and it ended up meaning I would head into the next new year feeling just terrible about myself. So if you can relate to that, I want you to know you're not alone. And most of society is doing this and is buying into the idea that you might as well give up on your goals in December. You know, I was just at the gym today and it was quiet. It was really, really quiet because I know people are already saying, well, it's Christmas time, I'm busy. I'm just gonna figure it all out in January. Now that brings me to my first tip. There's a certain mindset that many people, probably most people that I've met have around weight loss and health. And it's sort of this, all or nothing, I have to do it really perfectly or else I might as well not do it at all. Now this is very common and yet it's one of the most destructive mindset patterns when it comes to weight release. Sorry, I just put a mint in my mouth. Silly timing, okay, we're good. So the idea, let's say for example, you go to work with the best of intentions, it's December, there's all kinds of treats everywhere and you decide, I'm not gonna go for the treats, I'm gonna you know, stick to my goals. And then you end up having one treat and then it turns into two or three. And then you just say to yourself, well, what the heck? I already had a few, what's the difference between having a whole bunch more? And then you just go through this downward spiral. So some people call this the what the heck effect or the what the hell effect. And the interesting thing here is it's so common, it's what most people do, and it's the most destructive thing for your goals because there's a humongous difference calorie-wise between a couple of cookies or a couple of donuts and eating the entire box or you know having 10. And there's, a, there's been so many studies and TED Talks and experts talking about this phenomena you know, there's a study with milkshakes and they went around offering people milkshakes. Do you want a extra large or an extra small? And so people would choose. And then they went around a little bit later with ice cream cones and said, do you want an ice cream cone? And a lot of people said, no, I'm good. And then a lot of people said, sure, what the heck? And guess what people said, sure, what the heck? Overwhelmingly, it was the people that had the extra large milkshake that said, oh, what the heck, I might as well have an ice cream cone because I've already trashed my goals for the day. And that's that phenomenon, the what the heck effect. And when you think about it rationally, there's a humongous difference between like a 1200 calorie shake and adding on a 500 calorie you know, ice cream cone. There's a humongous difference on your body, how it's going to hold fat, how it's going to react. So thinking what the heck is just not serving you. So I encourage you to just question that belief this holiday season and ongoing. You know, a couple of things I wanna share, something I'm so passionate about, and I've got my chocolate here. And this chocolate comes from a beautiful store here in Calgary where I live called The Light Cellar. And it is healthy chocolate, okay? So I'm not saying you can't, can't eat whatever you want at Christmas, however, my passion is to allow myself what I desire to eat without restriction, and I choose more healthy options more often. So I'm not gonna say I'm not eating chocolate just because I wanna live at a healthy weight. I'm gonna say I'm gonna eat chocolate, I'm gonna buy and invest in food that serves my body. When I eat this chocolate, I savor it, I sit here and I savor it, and I feel amazing after because chocolate is actually a superfood. It is one of the highest nutrient dense foods you can eat if you eat the good stuff. 70% cacao or more with real ingredients like this is stone ground in house, Ecuador national cacao beans, you know, it's got cacao butter, 
a little bit of palm sugar, and that's it. It's all organic. There's three ingredients. If you buy a, a classic chocolate bar from this corner store, it has like 50 ingredients, and most of them your body cannot recognize, and it's really stressful on your body to digest. So I am not a fan of the old calories in, calories out, you just have to watch what you eat. No, you know, it's about the quality of your food. And so when you're going to a holiday party, I encourage you to look at what's there, look what really looks delicious, put it on a plate, and savor it. A big part of this is savoring. Yes, picking better quality stuff is gonna be a big step, and, you know, I love butter tarts. I love, you know, Christmas baking. There's some things that I really love. However, one of my tools is I make sure to put it on a plate. I always sit down to eat because otherwise I eat way more and I don't even notice what I'm doing. And so sit down to eat, savor it. And if you take a bite of something and it does not really taste that great, it's not what you thought it was, do not continue eating it. So that's a huge one. I know it sounds so simple, but a lot of people are like, oh, I don't wanna waste it, I don't wanna be rude. But if it's not calorie worthy, if it's not absolutely delicious, your body does not need to digest that. And you know, there's all these quotes that say things like, a moment on your lips is a lifetime on your hips. And I, I'm not into like the fear-based, harsh, you know, way of coaching people and inspiring people. However, it's true. Everything you put in your mouth is going to have to be processed by your body. It's either gonna be burned off in a healthy way, used to make your body healthier, or it's gonna be stored. And so I just encourage you to just keep that in mind. And one thing I know for sure, the last thing I'll say, is that deprivation never works. That's why I have this chocolate. So if I tell myself I'm not having chocolate, what happens, everybody is like this. Our brains start to say, well, she's not letting me have it. So then you start wanting it more and you start craving it. And for every time you deprive yourself, there's going to be an eventual binge. It's guaranteed. So to go swear yourself off chocolate, sure, you might be able to do it for a few weeks or months. However, eventually it's gonna end up in a binge, especially if it's something you love. That's why I believe, and I found for myself and my clients, if you let yourself have a small or medium amount of what you love and you actually sit and you savor it and you get rid of the guilt and the shame about it and you just let yourself have it, you'll become satisfied far quicker. Your fat burning ability will be higher because when you feel good and you're experiencing pleasure, true pleasure, your fat burning ability increases. If you're sitting there eating it feeling bad about yourself, your ability to burn fat plummets. It slows right down. So guilt and shame actually slow your fat burning abilities. So I encourage you, even though it sounds counterintuitive because you've been taught the opposite most of your life like I, probably, like I was and a lot of us, most of us were, let yourself have what you desire in small, moderate amounts and even if you think you're gonna go crazy and get out of control, it's a lie. It's an old paradigm to think, I can't have it. And if I have it, I'm bad. And giving yourself the guilt and shame. Because another thing guilt and shame does is it ends up making us feel bad. And then we just give up on ourselves. We do the oh, what the heck effect. And we lose all motivation because all of our energy is being spent feeling bad. Okay, so these are a few tips. You... Do not have to buy into the society's way of gaining a crazy amount of weight during Christmas, trashing your body. What if this year your intention is to just enjoy what you eat? You know, savor every bite. Let yourself have the things that you used to feel bad about, but let yourself have them in ways that honor your body. You know, I don't believe there's good or bad foods. I believe there's foods that really honor your body and your goals, and then there's foods that aren't don't so much. And I love the 80-20 rule. 80% of the time, choose those foods that really honor your body, make you feel great, and help you reach your goals. And 20% of the time, your body can handle the not so nourishing, healthy foods. So, and your mindset's huge. If you're feeling bad while you eat, you're totally hurting your metabolism and your natural ability to digest and burn fat. So those are my tips. I hope this was helpful. I would love, love, love to hear your feedback. Just leave a comment. And just remember, Christmas will be what you make of it. You don't need to go throw in the towel. Oh, what the heck? I'll just fix it in January. That is the old paradigm. That is not how we need to live our lives. We can enjoy the holidays. We can enjoy the people, the magic of the season, the food, without going down the 
rabbit hole, the train wreck of just totally trashing our bodies. So I encourage you, set an intention that you're gonna feel amazing waking up January 1st. That's my intention. I'd love to hear yours, and I hope you have a beautiful, beautiful day. Talk to you soon. Merry Christmas, I got my Christmas quilt up. Bye-bye.